guys and a very happy Monday to you. Uh, today is part four of this super fun little video series that we're doing and we're chatting all about ownership and how we can truly leverage the sense of agency over our lives in times uh, that might feel a little bit chaotic and how we can truly step into that to take charge of our health care. So we've talked about a couple of big different uh, topics. Today we're going to be talking about like our physical space. So the question I want you to ask yourself is, is my home a comfortable place for me to be for two plus weeks. And yesterday we talked a little bit about like food and what you might want to stock up on and the pantry and things like that. So today I want to focus more on like our physical environment. And this, you know, this question is going to be, the answer is going to be different for all of us because we're all dealing with different space issues. Those of you who've been following me for a while know that I live in an RV. So I live in 200 square feet. You might live in 2000 square feet. You might live in a one bedroom apartment, right? We all have come to this experience uh, with different backgrounds. And yet we can all do different things within the four walls of our home, whatever that looks like, to set ourselves up for success and make sure that our home is a very comfortable place to be. So, of course, none of us know right now what to expect in the coming weeks and months. But if we could have like a little crystal ball and imagine that we knew for sure that we were going to be in our homes for the next two weeks, are you comfortable enough in the space that you're in, in the ecology that you have crafted in your home to be good for two plus weeks, whether you have kids or dogs or none of that or all of the above, right? And just asking ourselves that question can often help us to identify some areas that might need a little bit of tweaking as we kind of go along here. So a few things that I want to um, just point out to you, kind of some tips and tricks, especially if you live in a tinier space or you have other people who share space with you who take up room, i.e. children or dogs or husbands or uh, roommates or whatever that might look like for you is to have little stations set up in your home. So this might sound weird, but if you're not used to working from home, having an actual place where you go to work, like do your office, can be really, really helpful. I struggled with this a lot when we first hit the road of like not having a workplace. So I had to kind of cultivate a little bubble, a little nook in our RV where I would go to work. That's not to say I don't occasionally work from the sofa or from bed or from outside of the camping table or whatever that looks like, but I do have one space that is dedicated to work and all I do in that space is work, right? So there's something to be said for that. Also, when it comes to our health, it's really important that we have little stations set up around as well so that we're remembering to utilize our tools. So if you have essential oils, having something like this cute little roller bottle stand or a nail acrylic nail polish holder where you can put your roller bottles and your um, essential oils in to remind you to use them, right, is really, really helpful. If you are taking supplements, having some sort of a supplement organizer like this right here, this lives on our counter full time because if it doesn't, we forget to take it, right? So this is what we do to set up for success. Um, something else you could be doing, especially if you have kids at home, set up little stations where like, okay, this is where we play. This is where we're going to work on school. This is where we're going to have some like quiet time, some meditation time, right? doesn't need to be expensive. You don't need to buy anything. Just think about how you might be able to craft little pockets within your existing structure and feng shui in your home to leverage for more success and more comfortability. The other thing to think about is the clutter. A lot of times when our physical space is cluttered, our brain can feel really cluttered, which then makes our life feel really cluttered and chaotic. So if you're kind of feeling the feels of just this total chaos swirling around you, there's only so much of that we can control. What you can control is the chaos in your home. And I'm first to admit that I, I thrive in like a controlled chaos environment. I'm a piler. Even in my classroom, I always knew where everything was, but I had piles, right? I had little pockets of clutter. In an RV, that's just simply not all that feasible to, to have, right? We need to be a little bit more mindful of where we're putting things and we just have less space. And I do find that when I have decluttered my area, my brain seems a lot less decluttered and I'm able to actually get more done and I feel more comfortable and more at peace. So if that seems like a really big task for you to take on, maybe pick one area a day or one area a week that you're gonna declutter. If you have kids at home, get them involved. My background is a teaching. I have eight years teaching in the classroom experience K through six. And I can't tell you how important it is for you to really use this as an invitation to integrate your kids into life, into the running of a household, right? Put the, get them in charge, have them go through their toy bin or through the junk drawer, whatever space feels kind of cluttered and chaotic to you, get them involved. Also, lighting is really important when we're talking about the comfortability in a space. So during the day, we want to have the overhead lights on. We want it to be really bright and sunshiny if it's a day like it is today where it's kind of cloudy outside. 
towards the evening as you're winding down, you're going to want to shut those overhead lights off and keep on more low lights like a Himalayan salt lamp or table lamps to kind of cue your brain to the fact that, okay, now we're shutting down. It's time for rest. We're kind of transitioning in our day, especially if you're not actually leaving the house and having that physical transition. Using lighting as um, a, a trigger or an anchor, if you will, can be really, really helpful. I learned this uh, this next tip from Ange Peters, who runs the brand Whole Fit. You can look her up on social media. She's incredible. And she taught this concept of saying goodnight to your kitchen. And I've been doing that for about a year now. All that looks like is taking 10 minutes at the end of your evening before you go to bed to completely clean your kitchen. So all I do is make sure there's no dishes in the sink. I don't have a dishwasher, so I actually have to do them. And I clean off the countertops with my non-toxic cleaner that I that I make at home. So I'm getting those aromatherapy benefits, right? I make sure the countertops are clean, and that does wonders for me when I wake up in the morning to go to work, right? So just take those extra 10 minutes, have a little quiet time, put on some low-key music, maybe diffuse some of your amazing essential oils, and say goodnight to your kitchen to set yourself up for success on the next day. Finally, using a diffuser is really, really helpful when it comes to shifting and creating energy in a space. I have here one of my favorite little diffusers. This is Mia from Stadler. She's on sale for 40% off right now, along with all the other Stadler products. I'll turn her on. She's awesome. She runs for 10 hours, which is super cool. If you do not have a diffuser, you didn't know what one was yet, I'm going to tell you really quick. All a diffuser does is uses water and essential oils, and it breaks down the little molecules in the essential oils to disperse them in the air. So yes, of course, it makes it smell really good, right? And we're not getting those uh, toxic chemicals that you might get in like a plug-in or a room spray, things like that. Um, but what this also can do is actually help to purify the air, so great for immune support. And we're getting those aromatherapy benefits. When we smell an essential oil, it communicates directly to our olfactory nerve, which talks to the limbic system in our brain. This is our like emotional control center. So for wanting to feel emotions of like, energy and happiness and vitality, we're going to diffuse some really happy essential oils like orange and peppermint. If we're wanting to feel a little bit more relaxed and more low-key, we're going to diffuse more of those like woodsy florals like lavender and frankincense and cedarwood, right? So you can really use your essential oils to also help set the tone in your space. I'll drop the link for Stadler below here once I finish this video so you can go snag anything site-wide, 40% uh, off between now and the 22nd, which is super cool. Okay, hopefully some of those tips are really helpful. Tonight, just spent, spent a little bit of a, a chunk of time percolating on the, on the question of, is my home a comfortable place for me to be for two plus weeks? And pick just one or two things that you can do today to move that needle just a little bit so that you're making yourself um, more, more set up for success as you really step into this place of taking ownership of your healthcare. Thanks for watching. I'll be popping in tomorrow. And I think tomorrow we're talking about movement, which would be really fun. Chat soon.